everybody, I'm Danny Otto. Welcome into another episode of That Recap Show. Now, before we get into the episode, just want to issue major spoiler alert. We are going to be going over everything that happened in episode six of season three of The Mandalorian. So if you haven't seen that episode yet, you may want to pause this video, head over to Disney+, Plus, check that out, and then come back and enjoy the breakdown. Now, with that out of the way, let's start the show. Popping Off presents That Recap Show. Joining with me to break down everything from episode six of season three of The Mandalorian, it's Johnny Rico. Hello. Hello. How we doing? Doing pretty good. This was, you know, just like I was telling you before we hit record, like another jam-packed episode. We got, you know, mm. cameos. We've got action. We've got progression on the main story. Like we got, we got everything. We got a little, a little bit of everything. It was like a, a buffet of, of what you would want from an episode. Yes, we even got lot. the weirdest kiss I've ever seen in a Star Wars franchise, and that's saying something. Yeah, it was weird. <laughs> but but anyway, I mean, you know, all jokes aside, I think it's a very solid episode. I was very happy with it. I mean, I think uh, I got a lot of things that I I really liked, and there's definitely a lot of I'm one thing I'm really really digging is uh, having kind of this. I, I'm using these terms lightly, but a buddy cop uh, kind of thing now between Mando and Bo-Katan, where we, we have them kind of as, like, co-leads now type of thing. I just, like, especially when they're, like, chasing droids and, and, and stuff like that, where it's, like, they're, you know, they're partners. Like, they're kind of, like, uh, I'll go around and, and you keep chasing. Like, just having, like, little buddy cop elements of, of the series now. I, I'm really enjoying that that aspect of things because we get, like little I, I feel like little kind of side jabs and little kind of side quips that you would get in like a buddy cop thing like like we we know we know this we're in we're in season three anyone who's been watching the mandalorians in season one knows mando has a very strong distrust for droids in general yeah and so you know one of the things of like you know we, we've got to track down these droids and stuff like that and and bogotan's kind of like trying to you know Make it like, are you? Are we gonna do this type of thing? He goes, "You had me at battle droids." Like, like just little I, things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just love how like they just you know those little those little things that they poke in. But also the the thing that uh, I and I, I always have to have some sort of pop culture reference. This is a real life reference. You know how we have where they're building those uh, like robot dogs. Like obviously they're not completely robot dogs. They oh really have yeah. Them. You know, you know what I'm talking about? about? Yeah. They don't have like the heads for like dogs, but they're four legs and stuff like that. And they have the earlier models, but you, they kick them to make sure that like they can stabilize themselves and not just fall over and then be like incapacitated type of thing. Yeah. And when, when Mando is kicking the, the droids down at the, the docks, the loading docks, that's what he's doing. And that's exactly what it reminds me of. Cause the first couple that he kicks, like they kind of, fall kind of backwards and they stabilize right. themselves and everything. And I was like, that's real life. Like that's from real life. Like that's, that's what it reminded me of. So pop culture reference. Is it even a pop culture reference? It's a real life reference. Uh, the other thing, and I can go on and on and on. The other thing that just immediately made me laugh. I think it was a, a perfect, like fitting element of comedy that they could put into this episode was when they're, you know, they're, they're, they have this mystery of figuring out like the droids on the planet and why they're, like, some of them are going bad and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and they, they take a sample of the blood. The whole thing, like, the whole premise of this, I feel like could have been like a Futurama episode where they're, they're saying like that, uh, robots have blood and, and all this kind of stuff. But they put it like into like a scanner, almost looks like a center, centrifuge and everything. But, um, <laughs> the scene where the, the robot that, extracted the uh plasma the, the whatever compound that had they they thought had like the suspicious uh nanobots in it 
Um, and <laughs> Mando goes, uh, do you think, do you think any of them are still going to be active or anything like that? And then it, that one turns bad. And then Bogdan just turns to him and goes, I think they're still active. Like, yeah. <laughs> like perfect element. Like you would see that in like, you know, like the other guys or, or, or any of like those buddy cop movies. I feel like that was a perfect element of comedy set perfectly in a Mandalorian episode. Like it wasn't out of place. It just worked. And I laughed hysterically when I saw that part. I was just like, that was, you have, you have me like, that's perfect. (laughs) So, but anyway, like I said, I go on and on and on. There were so many things in this episode to talk about, and we're going to break down more and more of them throughout this, but Rico, what were some of your initial reactions to uh, episode six? Yeah, this was, this was, quite an episode um i i'm struggling to find like the right adjective to describe it first one that comes off my head is like this was a strange episode yes um but so okay first off we're like this whole you know the the droid storyline basically gave me the whole like star wars meets irobot vibes essentially like Just the fact that we're we're following this kind of like this detective noir story, but based around droids is obviously uh, a reminiscent of uh, uh, the story of iRobot going around Android and stuff like that. So, um, especially when they're chasing the uh, the B two battle droid around, like that yep. pretty much reminds me of that little chasing with uh, with Sunny as well. But I really like that. <clears throat> but um, so okay. I, two couple of things I really liked the uh, Din interacting with the Ugnots, uh when they're look you know questioning other people <laughs> and you know first it was like B- Bogatan trying to have like have conversation with them and they're like what the heck is this chick saying and then of course because they uh, they bring up the experience that Din has with Kuil, uh he speaks just like like the way he did back in season one and, like you know the I have spoken came back which is a, a really great little callback just to season one and that character. And, uh, and of course, like you know, they give them all the information information they need, and it's like, what was that all about? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he's like, I, I spent time with Nugna. You just gotta learn how to speak the language, basically. I was like, okay, that was really cool. I really like that moment. Yeah. Um. Uh, another moment I really liked was uh, when they go into like the droid bar when they find like the, the data pad or whatever it was. Um. And when they walk in, all the droids stop and just give them like a stare, and it's immediately like uh like in uh episode four, of course. Uh, when they walk into the cantina and they bring in the droids, but then all the creatures look in and like, what the heck are these guys doing? <laughs> and he's like, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I kind of like that little callback as well. So there's some fun little callbacks to that. And then, of course, the the uh, the ending of the episode was really fantastic. Um, so that's kind of like where I, I'm I'm a little bit balanced on here. So like the, the, the front half of the episode was a little bit weird for me, uh, but the end of the episode was great. Great stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, just like you said, there were so many good scenes. And I told you the same thing with iRobot. I immediately thought the same thing. That yeah. totally works and is, is a perfect way to, to sum up at least, you know, that aspect of the episode itself. I thought was a great, like, comparison. Um, yeah, th- there was so many just, like, Mandalorian-rooted elements of comedy in this episode that worked so perfectly that weren't <laughs> out of place. They were perfect. I feel like those little like elements that we could just point to over and over again. But uh, Rico, you want to get to some big takeaways? Let's do it. Awesome. All right. I'm going to kick off big takeaways because I'm so excited about this. We did get some cameos. We actually got a lot of cameos in this episode. But uh, the two that I wanted to talk about are, of course, Jack Black and Lizzo. Like a, an amazing couple, by the way. Like if you're going to pick two people that I think that could play – off of each other really well as a couple, I think this totally works. Like, I would love to see, you know, a full length movie with those two as a couple. I think it works. And and the character, I was telling you this, I think the characters that they played so perfectly worked for them, like as as just being able to walk on to like the Mandalorian for a cameo spot type of thing. Um, because the characters themselves were very, you know, over the top and they were very like, live in luxury and 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 kind of all of this stuff so they were able to kind of you know not have to be completely rooted in like the mandalorian series they they could play they they were a world you know by themselves the last democracy is what the the whole planet was called anyway so they could act however they wanted to and of course this is a planet where you know all manual labor is only done by robots so like of course they're going to be like 
over the top and they're the, 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 the dignitaries of the planet and stuff like that. So I just think it totally works. Number one, they work as a couple. Number two, totally works for, you know, any cameo, I think, is when the character can kind of do, they can play the part and it doesn't have to have any bearing, I guess, in the rest of the the series. Because this is supposed to be, they're, they're a world by themselves type of thing. And I just, I think it was, it was very good casting, number one, but I just think it was, you know, as a, as an episode that was, you know, had a lot of ele- like different elements that I think could have stood apart from themselves. Um, I, I enjoyed the small bit that we got with Jack Black and Lizzo just as themselves. And I love that, you know, immediately Grogu just runs up to, to Lizzo and is like, all right, cool. I, I, I guess you're my babysitter now. Like, it wasn't like he, he didn't have any, like, uh, reservations about just, like, you know, hanging out with Lizzo and Jack Black. Which, look, if I'm being honest, the exact same thing for, for me. If, if, if I walked into the room and Jack Black's hanging out, I'm of course, I'm, I'm running up and, and hanging out. Type of thing. <laughs> uh, but also, we get a scene at the end where uh, Grogu gets knighted. So now we have uh, Grogu, Jedi. Potential Mandalorian and Knight. <laughs> so now it's uh uh what, what do you call Knight Sir? So now it's Sir Grogu. Sir, yeah. Sir Grogu from, from now on, no matter what. But uh, there was like I said, there were so many different elements in this episode that we could kind of you know pinpoint different things to talk about. Uh, I just wanted to to kind of go with like, of course, you know, the Mandalorian is becoming a, a popular franchise series franchise whatever so we are going to get these kind of cameos and i think where a lot of other series have failed i guess with cameos the mandalorian has done a good job of either having their care their their cameo characters you know very rooted in the story like uh we had bill burr i believe that was in uh season two and he was you know he was very rooted in the character it wasn't he you know it wasn't like, oh, I'm Bill Burr. He was that character, and he did a very, very good job of that. And then in this, on the on the other side of that, we have, you know, Lizzo and Jack Black being able to kind of just be over the top because they are in this world that really isn't connected. They've said it over and over again. This is the, the last democracy and, and and everything like that. So, I think they, it was it was a very good job at what they did, and they and they gave the actors, you know, a lot of free range, a lot of like they didn't have to be so rooted into the character. So I really liked that kind of as- aspect of casting. And I, I mean, I love me some Jack Black and Lizzo. Like it, it, anytime we can get them into something, I think it's, it's going to work. And, and yeah, I, I just think that it was, it was a really good part of the episode. Um, Rico, what were some of your big takeaways? Yeah, I, I, I do want to cover those, those cameos for sure. That, that was the part that was really weird to me. Um, <laughs> so, I love Jack Black, and so when I saw open the door and I saw him, I was like, "What the heck? Jack Black's here!" Like, that's pretty cool. They got him to to, to get here or to 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 be on the show. Um, but it, as the the the, the storyline progresses, okay, they're just kind of using them to kind of forward the the the, the side quest storyline that we that we used for the episode. Um, but like something about like them just didn't feel like they fit to me within the universe, and I I, I don't know. It just, it, I, I just feel like they were just catering to like the casual audience. I was like, hey, look, it's Stitch, Jack Black, Lizzo, and they're the person that's around with Grogu. Like that's they leave Grogu there as like their babysitters, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cute. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so like you were talking about the difference of using cameos like that versus cameos like say Bill Burr or the one the other kind of major cameo of this episode, which was a uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd. Yep. who kind of played the uh, the head of security or whatever it was, the, the one who kind of programmed the droids to begin with and, yes. and kind of sabotage them. Um, so, like, the way he's kind of integrated in the story and the way they used him to to throw back to the prequels, I thought was a much better usage of, like, his, his uh, cameo, especially because, like, we were talking about this earlier, we kind of expected Christopher Lloyd to be used in, like, a little more outlandish way. Um, so to see him in, like, this kind of more reserved role, kind of playing this kind of, like, regular officer kind of type of uh, role was a little jarring at first, but it's also different, which I kind of, I, I enjoyed that a little bit better. Um, but all that was, it was cool because it set up this really fun little detect, detective noir story. And, and again, it's, it, seeing Jack Black on screen is always really fun too. So like, I, I, I can forgive it for that much. Um, it's been a while since I, I feel like since I've seen him in like a, a big, 
big role, maybe like Jumanji a little, a little while back. But yeah, um, man. So we get to the end of the episode, and you know they get they get access to all the Mandal other Mandalorians who are hanging out on that planet. That's why they're there in the first place. <clears throat> and it's uh, it's Axwoz who's now leading Bo Katan's former fleet. And I I really love the way they kind of just kind of stand off like, okay, we, when you kind of need your help, no, it's not gonna happen. Okay, well, let's just fight. <laughs> yeah, want to fight about it? Yeah, well, yeah. And so they the the fight is awesome. By the way, it's just a great little Mandalorian versus Mandalorian fight where you get to see both of them use their 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 tools and their you know their whips, their knives, their jets, everything. Yeah, super fun fight. Of course, Bo Katan ends up winning. Uh, and then we get this like great ending where it's like, okay, they won't follow you. And goes like, you don't have the dark saber, and now. Then just kind of throws the big curveball. It was like, well, it, you know, back in episode two. But it's like, now back on Mandalore, uh, you know, I got basically disarmed by this creature, and then Bogotan disarmed that creature, and then I basically just gave me back my my lightsaber or dark saber. Sorry. Uh, so technically, it's 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 hers, and so there it is. Boom! She's now the the holder of the dark saber again, and and we get a great ending shot of her holding the dark saber. Uh, which right away reminded me of a classic shot in Star Wars Rebels when she accepts the dark saber from Sabine Wren and she's holding it up in the air a bunch of in front of a bunch of Mandalorians, which I thought was really cool. Um, so kind of seeing her standing next to, to Din with the dark saber in her hand and and in front of all these other Mandalorians, who I'm not sure if they're buying 100 into what she's selling uh, just yet, but uh, I just thought that was a really cool visual to end on and just kind of a Again, great way to forward what they set up in the last episode, right? We're going to go find the other Mandalorians and bring them back to us. And it's like, boom, right away, we're, we're, we're forwarding that. So um, there's still some other stuff we need to see tied up. But we, man, we only got like two more episodes too, which is like, there's a lot we're, we got to fit in. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that was the, an awesome shot to, to end on. Like her holding yeah. it, fade to black. Perfect. Mm. Like chill ending. Like awesome. I love that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to touch on one thing. Like I think... We're on, we're basically on the same page with cameos, but what I was trying to say is I, I like their ability to have two different aspects of cameos. And we did see both of them in this particular episode. Just like you were saying, Christopher Lloyd, who I love, and I've loved as an actor for forever, he definitely played a more grounded character and, and was more like in the plot points. And, and, you know, just like Bill Burr back in season two. But I feel like with Jack Black and Lizzo's characters yes they i think they were just there to kind of you know continue that story um but i think it was a good cameo just like you said for kind of the casual audience to be like oh oh i know those people i don't even know this story but i know those people like you know what i mean like i, I do think there's two different ways to use cameos i just think they used those two actors in a good way as far as they didn't, it didn't feel like their what they were playing was forced for either one of them. Is my point. So like their performance didn't feel forced. Now the fact that you know Christopher Lloyd was playing a plot point character, absolutely, I understand that. That had to be more gr grounded in reality of the Mandalorian and just like Bill Burr's yeah, character. Yeah, type of thing. So that's all I was trying to say. Is that I no, feel like fine. there were two different aspects to cameos, and we got examples of both of them in this episode, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I think they use yeah. both. both I, I would, uh, I was liking like the the Jack Black and Lizzo cameo to like if if, if Mandalorian has kind of turned into like Marvel She Hulk a little bit, like the vibe of the show yeah. turns into more of that. So yeah. like if it turns, it almost makes you feel like you're watching two different shows. Is kind of what like what I'm saying. It's like I think that's what makes it jarring. So it's like if it makes it feel like it fits within the show I'm actually watching, that's cool. But like when they come in and I feel like I'm watching like a sitcom now, that I think that's what makes it feel a little bit more off putting for me personally. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think there were weird, there were, there were little weird things with this episode, but I also think it kind of added to the viewing experience because we were, we both had the same reaction that Mando and Bo-Katan had. We we're like, this is weird. And yeah. they were having that. So it was even, even more of like a actual experience that we could share with the actual characters in the episode. We were both going, this is kind of strange. And they were saying that this is strange type of thing. So I'm sure they, I don't know if they planned on that level of planning, 
<laughs> but it was just something cool that we kind of were sharing the same emotion with the characters in the actual episode. But anyway, right. um, Rico, do you want to get to some predictions? Let's do it. Awesome. Why don't you kick off predictions? When uh, Din and Bo first kind of like walk up to the the Mandalorian kind of like camp or when, you know, I guess it's the camp. They were just kind of hanging out with their, all their ships. First of all, a lot of ships, a lot of ships. And they still have uh, uh Moff Gideon's cruiser, which is the thing we saw in the, the beginning of the episode, which we were talking about with the weird kiss scene. Uh, but, <laughs> but um, so there's still some questions I have going into these last two episodes. Of course, uh, the first one, of course, had kind of happened to do with the, the teaser, the last episode, which was the, uh, uh Got Moff Gideon being broken out of the, the, the cruiser, right? So, um, the, the little piece of Beskar alloy that was left on the shuttle. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with this mercenaries that are part of um, Axwo's crew, you know, or, you know, now Bo Katan's, I guess. But um, also, are we going to see the return of the Imperial Mandalorians? Is the also thing like, is that the other sleeve uh, or, you know, the trick of, of Moff Gideon's sleeve that he still has? Because he seems like a pretty well connected guy. And that he'd be holding off these certain little, like, you know, fail saves for, you know, stuff like this to happen, right? Like, if I get taken prisoner, I got the Imperial Mandalorians who are going to break me out. That kind of a deal. So that's kind of what I'm wondering if, if that's going to happen. Um, or if if Axwell's and his crew are going to end up being like this, we can't trust them anymore. And it's, you know, things are going to go bad. Like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help them out. Yeah. But then we end up turning on them type deal, you know? Um so yeah, there's a lot of different different uh, different ways they can go with this, but I'm really excited to see how like that particular uh, thread gets tied. I I totally like why they, this is why you went first. I I totally liked the the kind of predictions or at least thoughts that you have moving forward in this. I have I have an extra wrinkle to add to that that I <laughs> that I was actually thinking of, and and the reason why I wanted to build on this because yeah, I mean I I think those are the biggest questions kind of moving forward. Like what is this gonna? How is this going to lead back to? you know, the abandoned shuttle that Moff Gideon was obviously broken out of, the transport shuttle. Um, mm -hmm. What if? Because I still think the armorer is sus. Um, what if Moff Gideon and the armorer have made some sort of arrangement? Because, you know, she could get him Grogu at some point type of thing. Yeah. And, and he could, you know give them a place to live without being bothered by the new government that Moff Gideon ends up leading or, or thinks he's going to end up lead leading type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, so they could have arranged some sort of bargain in the best interest of both of those two and just both be shady behind the scenes. This could have been as far back as season one type of thing. Um, yeah. Just kind of pulling strings around and, and cause I don't know something about the armor is still still a little sus. That's all. That's I feel all. Like you could have. You could have spent this this episode. You could have taken out the the whole the detective storyline, and you could have taken that with or put that with, with the you know catching of what Gideon's been doing. Because I just want to see what the hell he's been up to, man. Uh, and the fact that we're still like we have the last two episodes and we still haven't seen him. Uh, we're getting teased. We finally got teases, but um, yeah, I like. I want to get some kind of catch up. Like I would have liked like almost a whole episode devoted to him, almost. Yeah. Um, almost more so than like the New Republic stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I think that's just a very interesting kind of storyline that we just haven't had enough yet to really enjoy. And I want, I want more uh, John Carlo Esposito. I love that guy. <laughs> uh, same, yeah. I, I, I would, I would love to see more of him. I, I'd love to see him in the uh, MCU. Mm. That, that's a tease for another, another uh, thing that we can go over another time. But <laughs> anyway, as we always say. <laughs> That's what we think. Let us know in the comments below. What did you think of episode six? Did you enjoy the cameos? What kind of cameo do you enjoy in series? And also, did you enjoy the little tiny bits of comedy that we had in this episode? I think they were perfect. Chef's kiss, uh, as far as I'm concerned, of this episode. I think they worked in perfectly. And what do you think Moff Gideon has been up to all this time? And are we going to get you know a solid episode to figure out you know, who he's working with, who busted him out, and what's going to happen moving forward. And as always, don't forget, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to hear about all of our video and audio podcast releases. Bye, everybody! Popping Off presents That Recap Show.